Hey guys, it's Pop Nerd here, and today I'll be showing you guys how to make a quick and dirty sci-fi lab scene. So in this tutorial, I'll just go over how to create a short animation like this with the cryo tank and all the details. So let's get started. Once you open up Blender, let's select our cube and scale it up. Hit tab to go into edit mode and delete one of the side faces so we can see inside the cube. I'll scale it down on the Z axis and subdivide the cube a couple times. I'll then extrude out the sides to create space for pipes and other sci-fi props. I'll extrude out the top of the room as well to create more space for the tank. I'll then bevel some of the edges to give the room a more interesting shape. To create the isolation tank, just add in a cylinder and increase the number of segments. I'll increase the number of segments to 200. Let's scale this up on the z-axis and inset it a bit. Select the middle faces and let's extrude those along the normals inward. Then select the faces at the top and bottom and extrude and scale those until you get a satisfying result. On the bottom part of the tank, I'll select a couple faces in every direction and extrude those out. I'll then select the top edges of the newly extruded areas and move those down a bit. Now let's place this tank in the middle of the room. Let's now place our camera so we won't have to focus on areas that aren't in the camera's view as we add more details. For this tutorial, the focal point will just be the one tank that's in the middle of the room, but I recommend messing around with the placement of the camera and the number of tanks to get more interesting results. So now that we have our focal point, let's add in all the background details. So to add monitors, just add in a cube and scale it on the Y and X axis. Inset the face a bit and extrude it inwards to create the screen. Let's inset and extrude out some areas on the back to add some support. Then duplicate the monitors and place them in the background. None of these background objects will have to be too detailed because we'll add some depth of field at the end. To create a desk under the monitors, I'll just select the room object, and in edit mode I'll extrude a couple faces under the monitors. I'll model a chair as well by just scaling and extruding a cube and beveling some of the faces. To populate the scene even more, I'll just bevel and extrude some of the faces of cylinders and cubes to create random sci-fi props, and I'll duplicate them and place them around the room. Once again, these don't have to be very detailed as their purpose is just to make the room seem more cluttered. To add pipes, let's inset the faces of a cylinder twice and scale up the middle faces. Then inset the middle faces again and extrude them inwards. In the Modifiers tab, add an Array modifier to increase the length of these pipes. Just like the other assets, duplicate this and place it all around the room, and make sure that the pipes terminate off-screen. I'll also add some light objects hanging from the ceiling so the ceiling doesn't look too empty. To add cables, add in a bezier curve and delete the vertices in edit mode. Make sure your projection depth is set to surface in the tool settings and draw the shape of your cable on a surface. Then in your object data properties tab, increase the bevel depth to add thickness to the cables. Repeat these steps to place cables all around the room. Some of these cables were free assets that I found on ArtStation, but most of these cables were just created using curves. Before we add in the person who'll be in the tank, let's add some details to the ground by separating the ground faces and adding a brick texture to the displacement of the new material and tweaking the node settings so it looks like the floor is made out of tiles. Now let's create the material for the liquid in the tank. First, separate the center of the tank object and delete the principled BSDF for the new object in the shading editor workspace. Add in a mix shader and two add shaders. Connect the add shaders to the mix shader and add in an emission shader and a transparent BSDF. Set the emission color to the color that you want the tank to be and connect both these nodes to one of the add shaders. Connect a glass BSDF and a refraction BSDF to the other add shader and tweak the settings until you get something that you like. To add the person in the tank, search for a free 3D human model on Google and rig the character using Mixamo.com. If you don't have an account, you can create one for free. Once your character is rigged, search for dynamic poses and select this one right here. Download the FBX file and import that into Blender. In Blender, place the human model in the tank and make the material dark so it's easily visible. I'll add some cables connected to the neck of the model so it looks like the person in the tank is a cyborg. 
To texture the rest of the objects in the scene, I'll just be using image textures that I find on textures.com and Google Images. For the floor, I'll connect the image texture to the roughness as well to make it look uneven. For the lights and computer screens, I'll use emissive shaders. I plugged in an image texture of a sci-fi UI into the color for the screen and used the RGB curves node to change the color of the screens to green to match the rest of the room. To add smoke to the scene, I just found a transparent video of smoke online and imported that using the Images as Planes add-on instead of making a smoke simulation. In the shading tab, I connected the image texture node to the emission of the principled BSDF and added a mix shader to the material output. Then I connected the principled BSDF and a transparent BSDF to the mix shader. Then I connected the image texture node to the factor of the mix shader. You can also add an RGB curves node here to change the color of the smoke. I placed the smoke in the foreground as well as behind the tank. Last but not least, let's animate the camera. First, let's select the camera and add a depth of field and select the tank as our focal point. Then add a focal length keyframe at the first frame, zoom in and add another focal length keyframe at your last frame and hit render animation to render your scene. And there you go. I hope this was useful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And thank you guys for helping me reach 500 subscribers. I'll see you guys next time.